Yeah, thank you very much for the introduction. Um, um, Yuki Hanyu, the uh, founder CEO of Integrity Culture Company, uh, which is also a um, um, spin-off from uh, um, DIY open source uh, seller uh, cultured meat hobbyist club. <laughs> Yeah, so the reason why I got into this uh, world of cellular agriculture is not really because of like animal welfare or the like, climate, but because they appear in science fiction, anime, and manga, and video games. And that's actually the reason why I got into sciences in the first place and did like nanotechnology in my chemistry PhD. Uh, so actually, I, I drew this. And there's, all, there's also a VR version of graphics like that in, in VR chat. So if you Google VR chat Shoujin Meet, then you get into one of these kind of, this kind of worlds. <laughs> yeah, but whatever, so, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so um, as in the introduction, um, it, the journey started with the Shoujin Meet project in as early as 2014, 2015. And after that, um, the Integrity Culture Company spun off. And, uh, and sometime later then, there's another uh, spin of called Cellular, Cellular Agriculture Institute of the Commons, which is a non-profit, so sort of like GFI or New Harvest equivalent in Japan. And they've, uh, uh, last year, they've been successful in setting up this like, uh, Japanese version of, what is it, Congressional, uh, Congressional Caucus. Yeah, so the uh, legal uh, legal parliament uh, parliament members um, for cellular agriculture. <laughs> so um, the ecosystem has been growing in in uh, quite good shape. Yeah. So uh, this this is some of the earliest um, my earliest work in the Shoujin Meat project. So basically, we've been using a gateway to equivalent as a cell culture medium because everything we know we knew that everything has to be in food grade and has to be really cheap, uh, so cheap and accessible that anyone can um, anyone can culture cells at home. So we actually did an experiment on that, uh, and this. Um, it, and the, something like that is still continuing. And this summer, we basically made uh, making of cultured meat an elementary school children's summer science project. So we basically taught them how to make cultured meat at home. And they did it, did it at school. And also, we also had this IoT-enabled microscope that basically take photographs um, of the cultured cells every 10 minutes and live stream on like Twitter or whatever. So if you go to lapstime.com, you can see their work of the actual uh, like cells being cultured, but like taken photo taken every 10 minutes. And after that, it's like synthesized into uh, like video or time-lapse video. Yeah, so uh, that's the fun part, but the not fun part is the current state of the cell agriculture industry. Uh, there has been there has been like allegations of like silo sort of thing with IP, and there's another like, um, what people basically say is that isn't that GMO deja vu. <laughs> uh, um, another. I think that I'm slightly worried is that uh, a lot of the kind of startups right now are taking some vertical integration model, uh, developing their own um, counter medium set of growth factors and build their own brand. Let's say that's successful. Then what happens? It basically adds just another brand to the supermarket shelves. <laughs> so uh, to, uh, then I think, come on, we can do this better. Then, but how? And my take is that if cellular agriculture industry could be more inclusive, that's, that's basically participation from a broader spectrum of uh, players, like farmers, local SMEs, uh, schools, hobbyists, and of course, uh, corporates and academia are very important, but so they should also be in. And this kind of um, wider spectrum could allow for um, better tra technological transparency, uh, public acceptance, and um, and also the variety in products. So if different people develop, um, a whole range of people develop whole different, another whole range of products and brands, then that world will be more, what is it? Uh, I, I would say, uh, I would enjoy that sort of variety. But for that to happen, uh, we need the infrastructure for that. That will be some inexpensive commodity materials and ingredients uh, that's like easily accessible, cheap, as well as a technology that that can produce 
whole range of stuff. Um, so it, can, it should be able to culture cells of like a chicken, beef, or, like, or uh, seafood species as well. Uh, and that, that should also be accessible by everyone. And that's basically the um, envisionings done in, in, during, during Shoji Meat Project era, uh, or the Shoji Meat Project is still ongoing, but yeah, I'm on, on, the, I'm on the early phases of the, um, the Shoji Meat Project. Then, actually, uh, Integrity Culture Company uh, inherited that vision and basically came up with that, like food-grade basal medium as the uh, commodity starting material and the counter system as um, a technology that allows for, um, and that basically is species agnostic technology that feeds on basal medium only. And uh, yeah, that uh, food grade basal medium, uh, I have it actually under the sleeves here. Yeah, that. <laughs> and, <laughs> actually, I have been, and I've, I've been distributing this to, um, to some people yesterday, but uh, there I, uh, to um, some people I made a mistake of giving only part one, and there's actually part two as well. So if anyone who got this from me yesterday and forgot, uh, I, well, I forgot, but uh, this part two, then please like, report to me. I will give you this part two. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, these two packages, uh, both to be, um, uh, they should go into a liter of water, uh, dis uh, dissolve well for, and possibly leave it for 24 hours, and then filter for, uh, for de filter to uh, filter out any possible bacterial um, bacterial contamination because yeah, because it's food grade, it's not farmer grade, so it's not, and food grade does not equal uh, completely bacteria free, so. Um, so that's why we need to filter this before before use. But otherwise, it's a direct replacement of uh, common DMEM, like Dalbeco uh, modified eagles medium, uh, whereas this one is called uh, IMEM, which is Integri Culture modified Dal um, eagles medium. Yeah. So uh, with that sort of uh, infra infrastructure based on our technology, then uh, a chef stepped forward. It was Chef Shimamura. Uh, his, his thought is, he has an, uh, he's actually a, an owner of a Michelin star restaurant in Japan. So uh, what he did is basically he, he gets, gets this basal, uh, basal medium, uh, use, the, uh, use that as the, uh, as a, of course, directly use that as a basal medium, but at the same time, uh, use, the, uh, the, use our cownet system to get the purpose optimized cultured serum, um, brew meat, and then cook. And it's, this, can, this, all of this can happen in just one restaurant. But I have to make one disclaimer here before, uh, for logistical reason, we couldn't uh, carry in that home scale counter unit to his restaurant because it's uh, basically 500 kilometers away from where we are. So we had to like, run that machine in, 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 at our site and, and mail that um, frozen cultured serum to his restaurant. But otherwise, uh, but, in the, but in theory, all of this can, um, could happen in just one restaurant. But there, uh, I, I thought of like, one thing. So is there any like, fundamental scientific, uh, scientifically, uh, scientifically, uh, scientific fundamental difference between cooking and cell culture? Like, if you boil it at 100 degrees, that's cooking, and then you boil it, at, well, do it at 37 degrees, that's cell culture. And if you do it at 50 degrees, it's called like brewing or baking. Well, so that really blurs the distinction between uh, the cell culture and actual cooking. But whatever. So that's what Chef Shimamura has, uh, has prepared, for, uh, starting from just the basal medium here, just from the basal medium here. So that's basically a serious piece of cell, uh, cellular agriculture or kuzan. <laughs> yeah, another one here. So this kind of, uh, yeah, obviously this is not for, uh, uh, what is it, to feed the world. It's basically ultra high added value stuff, but it at least uh, um, demonstrates the possibility of, like, uh, of the very distributed cellular agriculture. 
And from here, it's a bit on the technical side. So uh, I talked about this uh, system that feeds on basal medium uh, only and uh, to culture cells of whatever, or whatever um, cell types of any species. And it's called the CalNet system developed by Integri Culture Company. Uh, so and originally, this, the, the idea of using conditioned medium uh, came from the, uh, from the Shoujin meat project. And what's happening here is that it has got two parts, target cell bioreactor and feeder bioreactors. And in the feeder bioreactors, we have like, organ cells, like liver cells, like um, pancreatic cells, and the cells stay in the feeder bioreactors. And they basically crank out all sorts of like, growth factors, lipids, and um, liposomes, uh, and extracellular ma matrix materials and such. And they flow into the target cell bioreactor where the uh, meat grows. And the, the cells, um, the, what cells to be in the target cell bioreactor is all up to the user. And also, uh, uh, so uh, so what does uh, what Kalnet system does is it basically makes uh, cell culture uh, cell culture serum. So if we if we use bovine cells, they could be like cell cultured FBS. And but um, yeah, but. Uh, I, I, I have to admit that the downside of that right now is that uh, in addition to those uh, growth factors and good stuff, it also ha produces all the other uh, cellular metabolites like um, ammonia and lactic, uh, lactic, lactates. Uh, but we are working on that now because, uh, and I think, I think it's totally doable because some, some companies already have some re media regeneration and technology. So. Um, so, uh, so what we are thinking is that in addition to those like uh, um, pancreatic cells or other uh, or liver cells, we should have some sort of like kidney equivalent, and that's that's under work. So we have found that uh, the cell cultured serum prepared by the Calnet system is actually even more effective compared to a traditional fetal bovine serum. Uh, we have already scaled this up to a uh, um, 100-liter scale, which basically uh, produces enough cultured serum for uh, 300 kilogram meat per month, uh, uh, month capacity. So that's, uh, so that's the 100 liter Calnet system, and this should connect to a product bioreactor, um, which could be as big as, I would say, uh, a 1,000 liter bioreactor, or slightly bigger, would, pr be, would produce 300 kilograms of cells per month. So yeah, that's sort of scale. Um, obviously, we need to work a bit more on the product bioreactor side to make, um, to make use of this Calnet system at full potential. Uh, so uh, we've also done some like, uh, analysis on what's really in the, uh, you know, the cultured serum. Uh, we we find that uh, depending on the combination of feeder cells, whether we have like uh, liver cells or like lung cells or stomach cells or whatever, uh, it, re it really changes the composition of uh, what's in this cultured serum. And we've tested about like ten different uh, ten different components for the cultured serum, but uh, I'm sure that there's uh, there are like tens of more the tens tens of more different kinds of um, components in there. Uh, and yeah, so. Uh, <laughs> So how do we know that which uh, which feeder cell combination works the best? Uh, well, we just brute force the uh, we just brute force it to find it, and it's not like millions of combinations. Uh, it's only about, uh, I would say the number is only in the hundreds to thousands, which is the, which is basically feasible within the so-called high throughput screening. And, uh, and actually, cell proliferation is not the only thing it can do. It can also find, uh, there, uh, there are actually um, feeder cell combination that makes uh, differentiation or um, organizations to happen. So it's not just, uh, just, uh, just cell proliferation. And as you, you could, have, could have guessed, um, it's not limited to whatever chicken uh, muscle cell or, or only one, one, type, one type of cells. It could, be, it could potentially be applied to any so cells of any types of any species. So we've already demonstrated this uh, system on the cell cultured, um, cell -cultured uh, uh, duck liver cells, um, as well as the chicken uh, uh, Chicken myoblast, so which is yeah, the um, muscle cells, and it, it, all of this is you know, takes the start uh, takes the basal medium only as the starting material. Um, and here are some like, demonstration products. 
So we have, I also have like another sample, that's the cellular agriculture cosmetics, which is already on the market in Japan. Uh, some people tried it yesterday. Uh, it has got like about 50% 50 50 volume of the um, uh, cell, cu cell cultured serum in it with all sorts of growth factors, uh, with all sorts of growth factors in there. So uh, it's an anti-aging skincare, skincare um, <laughs> product. And there's also cell culture, the foie gras, straight, straight out of bioreactors. <laughs> yeah, so you see some like cellular scaffolding there loaded with cells. Uh, I can't open, open it here, but um, I would like to taste this. And we are actually doing a tasting event soon. So possibly within this year or, or perhaps uh, very early next, next year. <laughs> and, uh, but I think Everyone, everyone agree on one point that at some point, whole tissue culture would be the, the holy grail. So, and we actually have, we actually have an active R&D program on that. Uh, um, we, are teaming, we are teaming up with um, Tokyo Women's Medical, we have been teaming up with Tokyo Women's Medical University for about four or five years. And they, uh, they, they've been doing tissue engineering for the regenerative uh, medicine purpose. And they have the, uh, they sort of have the technology to do the whole tissue culture. But their problem was that uh, because um, and for that whole tissue, whole tissue culture to work, they needed very high uh, oxygen density um, agent, which is basically blood. But uh, using, um, but using using real blood was not that practical in making that for like any food or even medical applications. So what we did is basically we could just make cell cultured blood using Calnet system. And we've actually, we're actually working on that. We have some like red blood cell precursor or erythrocytes uh, cultured by Calnet. Um, so uh, our plan is basically make cell cultured blood by the Calnet system, uh, make, um, make the whole tissue culture possible. And uh, that eventually leads us to uh, cell, uh, cell cultured uh, steak or whole tissue culture. And, but, uh, I think this hasn't been really been discussed among uh, cell agriculture community before. Once we get whole tissue culture, what uh, the uh, the next next possible step is actually artificial womb. Yeah, we just we could just culture the uh, the internal wall of of uterus, um, put some um, then load that um, the cultured tissue with like, a fertilized egg. Then you basically get an ectogenesis working. But well, that's a bit in the future, but one of the possibilities I'm thinking. And I've already built a VR chat world for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if you look up that, uh, that earlier, the, uh, the uh, VR chat world that I mentioned earlier, like uh, Google Shoujin Meet um, the VR chat, there's actually a portal inside that world that leads you to the, the, that VR chat world with the, the whole rows of, uh, uh, of like, artificial womb. Uh, run by Japanese government to counter the demographic issue. <laughs> <laughs> and that facility is actually operated by this, uh, this department in the Ministry of Welfare uh, doing the pension. <laughs> but whatever. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so back to the original topic. So we are, we are working on is we, um, um, we are bas basically in making our technology, uh, this um, species and cell type agnostic cell culture technology, uh, um, very, we're trying to make it very, very accessible so that it can be used by, by anyone on the, on, on the map everywhere. So um, in addition to the cosmetics and the food, food industry, which is like, uh, relatively straightforward to understand, we could have like entertainment or cell cultured fur for uh, apparel, um, cell cultured leather for like car seat or whatever. Uh, on, on the entertainment side, what could happen is that uh, a chef, uh, like uh, Chef Shimamura, could basically design a meat which has got uh, some, like, some a steak meat with a marbling in the shape of Pikachu, which is like, very, very unnatural, but it's very fun. <laughs> So if, any, if, if anyone's like worried about the unnatural nature of cell cultured meat, I think making that sort of blatantly unnatural but enjoyable meat is an option. <laughs> 
Uh, so, but uh, once we, um, if there's such an infrastructure to, uh, that is like accessible one by, en by anyone, including like a uh, local uh, restaurant owner, what could happen is an, an inter interoperative cell culture protocols, like uh, local restaurant chef uh, develop a, a new, cell new cell culture um, protocol running on the counted system and basically directly wire that protocol to a bigger system in, in, in food companies. So uh, that's kind of like an, um, uh, that's kind of like an, an IP, IP business um, uh, and opportunity opening for uh, like meat developers. And I can say that um, um, we already sort of like par partially demonstrated that because uh, the counted system can happen at all scales from milligram scale for like on a typical uh, biotechnology lab laboratory 96 well plate um, for high throughput screening. Uh, we also have desktop scale to home scale and we also have um, the industrial scale that's, that can do hundreds of kilograms. Obviously, we need we need to make it bigger. So we still have to work we work together with uh, the bioreactor manufacturers, but it's on the way. Um, uh, so uh, we actually we actually work work with like, suppliers and engineering companies under a scheme called unified scheme called Calnet Consortium to uh, develop the larger scale Calnet um, system as well as the product bioreactor. So it's on the way. So, uh, but once that's like in place, uh, so if if anyone if anyone can upload their cell culture protocols to a bigger scales, what could happen is this kind of like an, an app store for biofacturing, and I call it biofacturing beyond uh, not just cell culture meat or cell agriculture because it doesn't have to be like meat sales. It could be it could be a, a cell culture protocol for cell cultured fur or cell cultured organ for an organ for medical applications, or further in the future it could be. Uh, um, 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 it could come with an engineered cell um, so that you could make like things like cyborg parts or even the uh, some like Pikachu meat. Uh, I don't know the DNA sequence for Pikachu, but I think it's somewhere, it's probably a combination of some rodent species with an electric eel or whatever, I don't know, but yeah. <laughs> So as long as we get an, uh, uh, the DNA sequence for mammoth, then we can get a, a nostalgic mammoth meat. <laughs> uh, but um, on the on the IP side of that is that what what would be what we would be seeing is that uh, there will be a whole range of um, of IP developers for cell cultured something, and uh, some of them go into industrial scale. But effectively, what could happen is that uh, how to make is made open on that uh, on that infrastructure platform. So anyone anyone can basically develop cell, uh, cell culture something, and it's openly openly visible on the on the app store, and some companies make it to uh, to scale. And scaling could it just go that can go proprietary. Uh, that's where the money is. So that way, what could happen is that well. Basically, transparency and uh, incentive as a business can be uh, can coexist. <laughs> so it's kind of a um, I would say it's kind of a um, um, utopian vision, but uh, at least we should work toward that. Uh, at least I believe so. Uh, so effectively, what could what would be happening is that uh, this uh, ideal scenario where uh, academia hinting the way, uh, academia including citizen science uh, and hobbies, and then. Um, and those uh, uh, academia and citizens can actually make cell culture something at a small, smaller scale or home scale, and then the businesses can scale and uh, scale and deliver. So on the other hand, what could happen? What happened with GMO is basically once the academia hinted the way, they just just jumped straight into the business scale, uh, business scale without uh, consulting people. So let's say, uh, let's say that cell agriculture is not going to repeat that mistake. So. Um, so basically, that was my uh, my take on the cellular agriculture and how it could go open. Uh, I'm sure that I've skipped a lot of details, so that I, I, I I'm going to take the questions. Thank you. Yeah.
Hi. I love this. I love open science. I love increasing access. I love citizen science. And in fact, I'm sure we all have done citizen science and it's a good vibe, right? Like it's good. Bringing science to the people. Mm. My big concern. Yeah. How are you controlling food safety and how mm. who's who controls the risks, right? Mm. Because on one hand, you cannot filter your way to safety mm. in terms of biological aspects, right? Because we're also thinking there's chemical hazards. Mm. People don't keep their own houses clean. I mean, no offense. I'm sure y'all keep really clean houses. But like well, how are like who's who then is in charge of that risk? Like for example, sealing everything into mm. a bag, there's the risk for botulism, right? Especially mm. if you didn't control. And we know that citizen science, however amazing and what we do you know i mean we all went through the pandemic fermenting everything mm. and there were issues in which we know that there have been issues that came out of that in which some people didn't ferment mm. things well um so i just wanted to understand like where do you see like the responsibility of that risk and how that discussion of keeping the mm. ultimate product safe lies within. Mm. Uh, yeah, so um, I think there are, there are roles to play be uh, be between the, uh, the broad spectrum of play players in there. So uh, the, um, and the st uh, sterility and all those things will be, uh, so it's not something that DIY scientists or the uh, chef developers will, uh, would do. It will be in, on the business domain of like how to, how to, of scaling. So uh, what's going, what could happen, uh, what should be happening is I think is like some the DIY scientists and chefs playing around with the, with the cell culture, uh, develop something, uh, but they cannot directly sell that. It's too small, eh? it's too small quantity anyway. So uh, they go to the, uh, to the scaling phase. That's where the, um, the risk, um, I think that's where the, uh, the responsibility for the food safety and other things come in. But so, then when you're having people do it at home themselves, right? Like children, for example. Yeah. And we all know, like, for example, E. coli and flour, mm. right? That's why we don't tell kids. I mean, I'm sure we all still eat flour when we make mm. cookies. But we know that that is now an actual risk and has killed people, mm. right? How are you, who then is responsible for protecting Mm. The population, if I am myself at home or if I, mm. you know, was going to make this thing to be safe. Mm. Like, do you see what I'm saying? Does yeah. That, sorry, I can rephrase So too. that's kind of uh, similar to, uh, it, yeah, DIY sushi is a possibility, but probably not advised to do it at home. So, so right, yeah, it's basically parasites. cooking raw fish at home and doing all, and people do get food poisoning every year. So I think it's, it falls, uh, it's basically falls within the existing like, food rules on that. But there is no food rules hmm. for DIY. Hmm. I mean, I'm sorry, I don't mean to like push yeah, on this. I, I just, I worry about like hmm. populations who are unable to make that decision for themselves, hmm. right? Yeah. Like you have children who honestly, I think they would love doing this, right? Like hmm. seeing what you said, I'm gonna look that up because that was really hmm. cool. But like, what if they decide to eat it? And what if during that time when they were making it, hmm. they got contaminated it? Mm. And then now they're eating it and they get sick. So who then takes on that risk and who takes on that responsibility? Yeah, if that uh, if that happens, it's it's a direct uh, direct equivalent with like uh, the, uh, of like sushi cooking uh, cooking class or something. If it, uh, and so it's basically in that case, uh, the responsibility would go to the teacher probably. So. Uh, so as a bottom line, it's not advised to, you can design meat, but probably not the best idea to just um, and, uh, like eat, him, eat, by yourself, uh, eat by yourself, um, which is like kind of on the borderline, do it at your own risk, but certainly not uh, dis distributing DIY made cultured meat.